What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down a great wide receiver football IQ quiz to test your knowledge of the position. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things. But also, fellas, if you are a wide receiver and would like a daily workout schedule to follow, check out that very first link in the description below for our ultimate eight-week wide receiver workout plan. It's eight weeks of what wide receivers should be doing on like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, etc., in the gym and on the field for route running, catching the works. I'll give you the exact sets and reps, video examples of each drill, everything, you guys. So check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. Let's get started with this video. So now, this is going to be a little bit different. If you're not familiar with our quiz style videos, what we do is we will show a pre-snap look, ask you a series of questions about the pre-snap look, give you a chance to pause the video, think about an answer, and then we'll break down why it's right or wrong. We'll play the video full speed. So this first question is going to be a little bit of change of pace for you wide receivers out there. What we're going over is we're going to be going over a different passing concept, and this is going to challenge you as a wide receiver to think like a quarterback. So what this play concept is, is we got an inside stem. Some people call it a box corner from the number one wide receiver. So he's going to be stemming to the inside and running a corner route. The number two wide receiver here is going to be running a five yard like flat route. Okay, so a couple questions about this. Number one, what is this play concept called? Who is the quarterback reading on this play? And if you are the number one wide receiver, and let's say there are two high safeties, right? You can't really see it on this look, but there are two safeties back here. What type of ball can you expect from the quarterback? So is he going to throw this thing on a line? Is he going to throw this thing with some air? Is he going to throw a jump ball? What can you expect? So you guys go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So remember, it's what type of play concept is it? Who is the quarterback reading on this? And what type of ball can you expect if you're the number one wide receiver? So you guys go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. Pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So this play concept is called a reverse smash concept. So a smash concept usually is when this outside receiver will run like a hitch. Maybe he runs a whip route and the slot receiver runs a corner. But now we're reversing it. So this guy's running a flat route and he might have the option to kind of hook up right there. And this number one wide receiver is running an inside stem corner. So that's the play concept name. Number two, the quarterback is going to be reading this corner on the outside. If that corner drives on the flat route, what do we have? We have this inside stem corner route to come open and to throw into this area. But like we said, there are two safeties over here. So what type of ball can we expect from the QB? It's going to be on a line and it is going to protect us from the safety. So why is that important to know? Let's play this full speed, then we'll break it down, right? Because you see what the corner does. The corner drops on the five yard out. Bam, he's wide open. We got a spot for him right there in the corner of this, uh, or right there, like kind of like front pylon, right? There's that safety that we were talking about as well. Now, reason why the quarterback has to throw this thing on on a line is because if he throws this thing with some touch, like a more traditional corner, this safety over the top can go make a play, right? It's easy as that. We're trying to protect this receiver from this safety. Usually easier to throw out of the slot. Now, why is this important to know as a wide receiver? Well, number one, you know when to expect the ball. Like if you do this inside stem and this guy's running with you, we know that we did our job, took him out of the play. Ball's probably going to go here. You still want to expect the ball always. I'm not saying to not expect the ball, but it's good to just know how offenses work, number one. Number two, it's good to know because you can expect the type of ball from a quarterback, right? Against man-to-man -man coverage or when that ball's thrown with some air when you run this corner you're probably going to keep your head down and go to this back pylon but since you see that it's zone two high safeties and you know that this ball is going to be thrown a line as a receiver you're like okay i better get my head around fast to be able to locate this ball so that's why all that's important for a receiver it's always good to know that stuff you should know the entire offense as a wide receiver number one because you can be interchangeable you could play this spot you could play this spot you could play over here you could play anywhere if you have a good hold on the playbook and how offenses and defenses work okay so that's a great play concept good for all wide receivers to know okay so now Next question is, how would you guys run a deep 12-yard corner route versus this specific coverage? Okay, quarterback is lined up to the left. How would you guys run a corner versus this specific coverage? You guys can go ahead and pause the video and think about your answer. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So in this specific example, when it comes down to running routes, when it comes down to picking like a plan for your route, like plan of action, like how I'm going to actually approach this specific route, first thing I got to look to identify is the DB's leverage. Where is he lined up? And then the second thing I want to identify is the distance from him. How close or how far is he from me? So if you guys said that this DB was lined up outside shade, maybe about two yards away, and you got to run this corner, if you guys said, okay, 
I'm going to close the distance with him. I'm going to try to step on his toes, give him some kind of fake to the outside, take the inside release and work to stack over the top of him. That would be correct. Now let's play this full speed. Then we'll talk about why that's correct. So he attacks him, takes the inside release, is able to stack, gives a move. And the reason why this is correct is because it gives the quarterback room to do this, to throw us open, to throw the ball early, to anticipate a spot, to throw to a spot and just let our let his receiver go run it down, right? Because think about this. Obviously, in a perfect world, we would love to take always an outside release on outside breaking routes. Like we would love it if it was inside shade because that's easy money. You just give him a move, go outside, get into him a little bit, and you got all this space to work, right? But since he's sitting there making it uncomfortable on us, a lot of receivers aren't, aren't comfortable taking the inside release. They'll try to force the outside release. This guy is going to get hands. He is going to protect his leverage. That is why he's lined up there in the first place. He has outside leverage to protect the outside. So you try to force it, he's just going to get hands and force you to that sideline. So if you end up breaking on this corner and you're at like the bottom of the numbers, that's not enough room for that quarterback. He won't throw it or he's going to throw it out of bounds. So you got to take what this DB gives us. Let's attack him. We want to close the space so when we do get him to move, it's easy for us to get skinny, which means you're running hip to hip with this guy. If you can go hip to hip right past him, that makes it easier to stack. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Well, what if I do this and this DB is right here and I can't stack? You would take this outside arm. You would put it on the back of his hip, back of his shoulder, or maybe back of his elbow just on the other side. And you would slip under him because, guys, you still have that all that room to the outside because you didn't force the outside release. So this is textbook right here. This is exactly how you should run that corner versus outside shade press. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. What I would say is that you could probably close a little more distance off the ball. I think that's something that this receiver didn't do the greatest on. I think he gave, like, you know, he attacked his leverage, gave a little jab inside to hold him there. But dude, we want to be like up here. Because if you're up there, you have a higher chance of restacking. You see how there's this gap? I think if this DB plays it better and he opens up and takes a better angle, he cuts off this entire route. And this is a very, very challenging route for this receiver. So make sure that if there's any type of space between us and the DB, we have to close that space before we get up into the break. Okay, so now this example here. How would you guys run a 10 to 12 yard dig route versus this specific coverage? Okay, so and I'll give you a hint. This is off man coverage. This is off man coverage. I won't tell you the leverage. I won't tell you anything. Just the quarterback is over here to the inside. How would you run a dig versus this type of coverage? Okay, so you guys go ahead and pause the video and think about your answers. So pause the video. All right, let's break this thing down. So first things first, we come up to the line. We got to identify his leverage, whether it's press coverage, whether it's catch technique or whether it is off man, we are looking to see where he is shaded to. If he's shaded over here, like this DB's lineup over here, he's got inside leverage. If shaded over here, he's got outside leverage. If he's right in front of me, I don't know exactly what his leverage is. He's probably trying to disguise it, disguise it, but that's like head up coverage, I guess you could say, or head up leverage maybe, right? So when he's outside leverage, we know he's trying to prevent an out route corner fade ball. Now, the nice part is that I have an inside breaking route, but a DB will never play outside shade, man to man, or even zone without what do you think? Help to the inside. So what he is hoping that Jefferson does, he is hoping that Jefferson just takes off and runs a lazy route and runs right into this safety up and he will be right on his hip. So that's a very tight window for the quarterback. So if you guys said that you would want to stem and attack him to the outside to widen him, and then break, giving your quarterback a bigger window, that would be correct. So let's play this full speed. So Jefferson goes straight at him, attacks his leverage, breaks this thing off, and then you see the amount of space that he has, and there's that help. Guys, if he just took off and ran, he'd be running right into the help. This is why it's important. You hear me harp on this all the time if you watch these videos consistently. I'm always talking about leverage. I'm always talking about distance. This is why, guys, and these are perfect examples from some of the highest level route runners in the game doing the stuff that we talk about all the time and teach all the time, right? This is what you guys should be trying to apply to your game, right? He's outside leverage. Let's go attack him. Let's get him to keep that leverage because I guarantee you this. He's going to do whatever possible to not give up a fade. Or give up a corner. So if you start to make it look like that fade or that corner, he's going to honor that. And that's a bigger window. And if we can run a quarterback friendly route like this, expect yourself to get the ball and to get more opportunities all the dang time with your routes.
All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like an eight-week wide receiver on-field and gym workout schedule, everything wide receivers need to be doing in the gym and on the field, all sets and reps given Monday, Tuesday, you're doing this, etc. Again, very first link in that description below. I'll see you guys next time.